Right. I guess we're in business. So, uh, I've got Dietrich with me, and we're going to... Hello, Dietrich. We're going to just test a theory about the damage model. The theory is this. It relates to the Spitfire. The theory is that when you're firing both the Brownings and the Hispanos, so that's all four Brownings and the two Hispanos, and those hits are connecting with an enemy aircraft, that the damage model is having a little bit of trouble keeping up with the total volume of rounds that we are fi- uh, that are hitting, and it seems to be prioritizing the MG hits and perhaps ignoring some of the Hispano hits. Okay, this is a purely speculative theory. The theory has come about due to some discussions on the Discord, the Storm of War Discord, where people have been reporting, let's say, um, unexpectedly low um, damage, despite a lot of visual indications um, that damage should be occurring. The first problem was that I just tried to test just firing all the guns, and I was noticing when I'm firing everything together that it's actually very hard to know what's hitting. Um, when you fire the machine guns and the, and, the, and the MGs together, the splashes look exactly the same. There's no visual difference in the um, hits. And in fact, when you are receiving the hits in the Anton as well, you hear the same sounds and you see the same splashes. So it's very hard to tell when you're the Spitfire pilot exactly what rounds are hitting. So then I thought, well, the only way to uh eliminate the variable is to just fire the cannons alone and when i started firing the cannons alone i got the impression that the damage response was better so that's what we're going to be looking at i'm going to spawn in a spitfire here detrick is in a anton just out in front of me so let's go here we are that's detrick out in front now i'm going to turn the dcs volume down a little bit here just so it's not so loud so that i can not shout now, I've got my guns bound um, differently now. I used to have them all bound to fire at the same time, but now I have just cannon, just machine gun, and then both on three different triggers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep up behind Dietrich here, and I'm going to fire everything. So this is kind of the baseline um, test. Now, the mission we're on here, this is a, this is a Storm of War mission. That so it's the exact number, same number of objects and everything that's normally on a storm of war mission. The only difference is we've enabled external views, and and the labels and added a couple of air spawns. So everything else that's happening in the background is standard for a storm of war mission. The same server load, etc. Right. So that's about 250 meters behind. I'm just gonna fire off a burst very shortly, and this is gonna be everything. Okay. Okay. Lots of hits. Sounds so that, pretty dramatic. Yeah. So, so that looked like both MG and Hispanos hitting um, two separate impact locations, just behind the few uh, the l- trailing edge in the left wing route and halfway out on the left wing. So we've got a stream of some fluid or coolant. It's a pale whitish, thin, wispy stream. And Dietrich's aircraft is there. It's got some visual damage showing. Can you just give me some maneuvering, usual flight controls, etc.? Okay. Roll. Maybe, maybe a little sluggish. A little sluggish? Maybe not a lot. Yeah, roll looks okay ish. Pitch looks okay. It might be a bit slow. Can you give me try and do a snap roll either way? Oh, yeah, that's pretty quick. Okay. Now, the visual damage shows as the left wing, but it doesn't look horrific. Now, I got the feeling that I was hitting with cannon and MG, and it didn't seem to have really done much. Okay, whether or not that is realistic is, is another question, which we're not really going to answer here. So I'm going to another, have another crack here. 250, that's right about convergence. So let's try and pop some rounds into the back again. Very hard to reach the secondary trigger I've got. It's a thumb button without throwing the aircraft out. 300, that's right on convergence now. Okay, that was the right wing, but I think all the cannon rounds went low. So I think that was only machine guns. I'm pretty confident that was just machine guns. So we'll try again, 400 yards. We're out too far now, I need to close. Uh, 
That's probably three three fifty. Right, same location as the first salvo. I see no difference in damage really. On the left hand side. Okay, a bit more on the left. All right, here we go. All right, that was at convergence. That's wiped you out, hasn't it? Yeah, I've got uh, no elevation control now. No elevator. Okay, that aircraft is now out of the fight. At convergence, it is devastating. But the question is, should those first couple of salvos have been more effective than they were? Very, very hard to tell. Let's respawn and we'll do the same test again. Okay, ready when you are. Okay, in, stable. Cool. Alrighty, spawning now. So same again, cannons and machine gun. This will be the the second and last of this both cannon and machine gun test, and then I'm going to switch over to just cannon. And we'll see if there's any obvious appreciable difference in the damage model's response when I'm not firing the machine guns as well. I did about 15 of these tests yesterday with Burrito and found it very hard to notice an obvious difference. It seemed to me that Hispanos or Hispanos and machine gun were both very effective, um, especially at convergence. If you get these aircraft at 250 to 350 meters, if you get a burst in the back, a half second burst brings the brings the Anton down so still struggling to really see an instance where it's obvious the damage model was not responding but that's not to say it isn't happening okay here we go I can open up now pretty dramatic yeah okay um, I've got your left gear down lots of holes in the left wing the right wing seems okay I only saw four Hispano explosions out in front of you so I think four rounds four cannon rounds missed and the rest oh, all no hurt. Aileron no aileron control. Nothing. No, I'm rudder flying at the moment. Okay. Um, pitch and rudder. Pitch and rudder. I mean, you, there's no way you could fight that aeroplane. Oh. What's your maximum speed you can obtain with that gear down? The oh, left gear hanging down. Out. Just put some. Um, yeah, go full throttle. throttle. Yeah. Yep. Doing about 460 kilometers an hour at the moment, accelerating. 460. Um, That's quite quite yeah. quick. But um, just a light dive here just to pick up a little bit of speed and then I'll level back out again. So okay. I'm now I'll level again. It's maybe about 490, 495, something like that. Okay, now I'm full uh, full throttle and full RPM. So the air Spitfire cannot go any faster. I am slightly out of trim. So let's just... Now you're doing the same airspeed as me. You might be a fraction slower... A fraction slower actually you might be a fraction faster okay now this is a little bit disappointing I would expect that Anton to be slower I think with that left gear down with a shredded left wing a shredded left wing and the left gear down metal and stuff like that yeah although I am catching you now it's just incredibly slow I could kill you quite easily I could get another burst in but the Spitfire is doing 330 32 334 miles per hour indicated at about six seven thousand feet so that's pushing up 340 or so true airspeed um i'm now doing about 510 another thing i should point out is that i'm flying with the uh side slip as well so the ball's way over to the right because i'm using oh, you're, you're, to, uh, you're unbalanced and you've got okay yeah, yeah all right so i think there is a pretty strong argument that the aerodynamic effects of damage are not really showing. And that's got nothing to do with this theory about firing the cannons and the machine guns. That's a totally separate issue. Um, I think that Anton is probably performing too good. Having the left gear down, what do you reckon? I would say so, yeah. And the left wing is shredded. I mean, there's gaping holes and there's raised metal yeah okay let's um let's spawn again and i'll just do the cannon and we'll see if it you know knocks you out earlier with just the cannon okay so we're gonna re we're gonna re-fly i'm gonna jump in okay i'm ready when you are okay 
Okay, it's pulled in. Excellent. Right, just for the sake of proving the test, I'm going to fire my trigger that has just the cannons bound here. So here it is. And you can see just the cannon firing, nothing from the machine guns. Interesting point from Trouble in the in the live stream chat suggesting that SL mod used to interfere with hit registration. Interesting. Yeah, but we're not sure if it still does. Thanks for the tip, um, Trouble. Hmm. We do rely um, on SL it, mod. <laughs> yeah, SL mod is not switched on on the. That's test true. Server. It's ah maybe we need to switch it on on the test server. I wonder if SL mod's at fault. But SL mod is happening after the hit registration. SL mod's doing its work after the game. So SL, the game is already doing its thing before SL mod has anything to do with it. I've, I'm not sure. Uh, unless back in the day when processes were a lot slower, it would therefore interfere with DCs. Okay, opening up now. This is 100 meters. I need to increase that. There we go. That's 200 meters. So we're right about convergence now. Those all went low. Now, this is what I mean about the, the cannons going low, because had they been machine gun rounds, they would have hit. The cannons fire a lot lower than the MGs. You need to adjust your aim. So I think for a lot of Spitfire pilots, they think they're hitting with the cannons, when in fact they're only hitting with MGs. Okay, let's aim there. Hey, that was some uh, hits, similar sort of noise. I saw some rounds go over the wing and some go below the wing. Yeah, I don't think I hit with many. I think I might have hit with four. Yeah, I've got no elevator anymore. No elevator. Okay, so you're already combat ineffective. Okay. No, I, I mean... You're I going in. Yeah. I will be going in. Um, and uh, I think the only thing that I can really do, maybe at this point, I don't know what would happen if I put flaps down, to try and lift the nose. Yeah, I'm just trying to arrest. No, I'm gone. You're gone. Okay. That was a very, very short burst. I think probably four to six rounds probably hit you. Um, like you say, quite a few of them missed, and the first burst missed entirely. Um, but when the when the Hispano rounds are on, they seem pretty effective. That's for sure. I think the Hispano rounds, when they're on, they really are dangerous. Yeah. The question is. Um, So the question is, are the MG rounds, are the Hispano rounds hitting when people think they're hitting? Because they seem to fall a lot shorter than the MG rounds. And you get the big splashes as though you're hitting with cannon. And the other question is, is SL mod still having something to do with all of this? Um, but I don't, I don't understand really how SL mod could be interfering given that it's only recording what's already happened. Right, one more test. This time, uh, we'll go with cannon again. All right, Dietrich, it's good if you hold that course and speed. Oh, I'll just get stable. Now, what I might do shortly is get someone to join us. Do you have the Spitfire ditch or you don't do? Um, no, I don't. I've only got I might get someone to join us who owns the Spitfire who can shoot at me and I'll fly the Anton so we can see it from the recipient's perspective. Because that's often a lot of the debate misses that. And that the guy getting shot at actually is very, very sick indeed. But the guy doing the shooting thinks he should be sicker. Okay, 600 meters. It's going to take a while to close here. I need to just get a bit more in trim. Let's just bring some right rudder in to get it co coordinated. Okay, 400 meters. Or 400 plus, rather. 300 plus. Okay, close to convergence. I'll open up now. Just Hispanos. Oof. Okay. Yeah, massive on the right wing. Yeah, they landed both. That was at convergence on the right wing route. Have you got 
control authority? Okay. I do, but it's not very good. Yeah. I mean, that was probably a few rounds on the right, right wing route, but all in the same location. So, I mean, there's only so much damage you can do to the same thing. Um, okay, I'll try and get you on the fuselage now. Let's bring the rudder over. Maybe oh, one cool. round. Yeah, one or two rounds halfway down the fuselage. Nothing too serious. Okay, there we go. We've got a fire. A couple of rounds in the back. Um, just inside convergence, but the rounds, the rounds landing midway down the fuselage towards the back. Now you're on fire. Let's see how long this fire burns before your pilot dies or worse. I don't know what could be worse, but... Blacking out. Blacking, Blacking out? out? Okay, so your pilot's dying. Yeah. Alright, so that was a pilot kill from the fire after a few seconds. Kurt asks, how long is the delay before SLMOD records? Yeah, because it might be having an effect during burst. So the argument here being that the burst begins, the first few rounds are clear, and then SL mod starts recording, which is causing some workload on the PC. The burst is still firing, and the hits are still being recorded while SL mod's working, and that somehow that's causing the hardware to, to fail. It's possible. I just don't think the hardware now is going to be affected so much by that. A good server like ours running on a, you know, um, a 2020 generation Ryzen CPU with 32 gigs of RAM should be, DCS should be unaffected, but there's always a chance. Um, what we need to do is we need to get SL mod running on this test rig to see if it suddenly changes the situation. Okay. So from, from this limited testing, it's really hard to see if firing just the cannon or a combination of cannon and machine gun, or we haven't done just the machine gun, has any real difference. I actually think that just firing the Hispano, Hispanos is really effective, but the, the main reason I think it's effective is because you actually are forced to aim for the cannon. When you're firing the cannon and the machine gun, you tend to aim for the machine gun because you're getting all these visual indications that the rounds are hitting, but those visual indications are the machine gun rounds hitting, and the Hispano rounds are normally falling underneath, falling short. So by, by arming your aeroplane with just the Hispanos or just firing the Hispanos, it forces you to add more deflection and you're actually getting more hits from the Hispanos, which is why it seems more effective. And I actually think that's driving a lot of this pilot aim. So one thing that can be done for the purposes of uh, testing is that if you have the aircraft stationary on the ground, and you uh, fire one set of guns, then the other set of guns, and you do this uh, in a dusk or an overcast uh, sort of day, then you'll see where the traces are going. And what you do is you have a unit, a ground unit, which you put off to one side, and then you fire just with machine guns, then you fire just the cannons, then you replay the track, and then you view it from the perspective of that ground unit off to the side. And without moving the view of that ground unit you watch where the two go and you yes. take some screenshots or some videos and then you plot a line of where those traces are going and i've not done this um, for any of the allied aircraft but i have done it for uh, bf 109 and for the differences between the mg 131 and 151 um, and you can see that they have quite distinct trajectories they're quite different and i think then measuring, doing some measurements against objects of known size, you could then tell that, okay, the deflection is dropping, you know, I don't know, mm -hmm. 5 meters or 15 meters or you know, 30 okay. meters at particular ranges for, a, for an aircraft that's parked on the ground. But tell the fact that it's parked on the ground means that the aircraft is definitely not moving. It means yes. you've got fixed viewpoint. Yes, the aircraft is pointing up maybe 30 degrees up, nose up into the air. 
but for the purposes of working out what the, what the ballistics, it's a good test. Okay, what I'll do is I'll set that up quickly now. I've just left your server, Dietrich, and I'll just give myself a Spitfire here. Ground spawning. Um, yeah, let's just go here. Combined joint type or something. Fine. We need a Spitfire. And it's going to be a player driven aircraft. And it's going to be facing, I think, this way. So I need a ground vehicle over here somewhere, about there. Um, that will need to be one that can be controlled with combined arms. So what what can I use? Um, so I'll use a flat gun. Out. Yeah, I'll use a flat gun. The okay. feeling gun. Okay, face it that way. Right. So that's that. That needs to be player controllable. This one here is a player Spitfire. He's going to start on the ground. So take off from ramp. Ramp 21, which means he should be facing this way. Okay, I think this is set up correctly. And let me just save this then as gun test. Yeah, um, there are two, Kurt Jones, uh, Kurt Yostis, there are two types of convergence. There's horizontal convergence and vertical convergence. So you're right. Um, if they are set up in DCS to be horizontally and vertically convergent at the same point, then that point is absolutely devastating. And everything apart from that is considerably less devastating. If they're set up just to be horizontally convergent, then the Hispanos will always be firing low, no matter... Where? Because the trajectory of the Hispanos will always sit underneath the trajectory of the machine guns. The machine guns fire higher because they're lighter so and they're faster. Um, so yes, you're right. It's a very important question. Um, I'm going to check this mission now. We're going to set for early morning. So four, hopefully that's dark enough at four in the morning. Save. And I'm going to just turn externals on. Cool. That's all set up. Right, save that, and I'll jump in, and I'll just do a little test here. Okay, this might not be dark enough, but we'll see. Okay, so cannon. Um, now, how am I going to do this? This is going to be a bit tricky, because I have to overlay two images. But Okay, that's cannon, and then I'll do cannon, and then I'll do uh, machine gun. And then both, and then cannon, and then machine gun. Okay, that should be enough. Now we save the track file. This is uh, Canon. And exit. Right, leave this. Canon. Tracks, cannon, cannon, cannon. Right, pause. Go to the flat gun over here. And, oh, I didn't set it up so that the JTAC position was available. Bugger. Um, there's probably another way around this, and that is to go via the external views to the... This isn't working. I've messed that up. Right, I have to rerun that. This is frustrating doing this kind of testing because I always bugger something up. Roles. Battle commanders. I need to enable the battle commanders. Nine, 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 nine. Gotta find it now. Units list. Get where all this shit is. <sighs> there, battle commanders. JTAC. We need to I'll just add a couple of those in. Oh, five will do. Right, file save. And then I need to change that Spitfire role to client and run it as though it's a multiplayer mission. Save. Go. Okay, trying this again. Take the Spitfire. 
So, same as before. A few cannons. A few machine guns. A few cannons and machine guns. A few machine guns and a few cannons. Brakes need to be need to be on because we're just rolling backwards here. Let's do it again. Brakes are on fully now. Cannon. Machine gun. You can see how much higher the machine guns are. That's the machine gun, and that's the cannon. Well, it's not too bad. They're both together. All right. That should be enough firing. Save the track. As test. Test track. Cannon. Good. Done. Yes, overwrite. Right, now we're going to review this track file. Cannon. Oi, oi, oi. So, we just pause the mission. Go to here. Oh, no, you can't do that by viewing it like this. Um, okay, I have to check what my view next vehicle is. Controls. Ground vehicle hostile view. Ground unit view. Left control 7. Okay. Now we should see. I think. Oh, it's very hard to see from this angle. Just a oh, there. calculation. If there is a, uh, a a deflection of say one tick mark on your crosshair, and one tick mark is probably one degree or something like that. One okay. degree at a hundred meters, three hundred feet, is about two meters. Okay. So that means that you know shells are dropping well below the aircraft. Yeah. Okay. It's very hard to tell visually on that test I was doing. I'd have to sit down and do it in a much more structured manner. Um, I'm kind of doing it in a rush here for the sake of the stream, but yeah. So very hard to tell with that little test we just did there whether the rounds are going. But according to Dietrich, at 300 meters range, was it two meter? No, no, no. It's uh, 100 meters range. Uh -huh. It'd be about two meter. Okay, so the cannons are falling two meters short at 100 meters range, assuming they're not set for the same convergence. But I mean, we would really need to do the test extremely carefully, um, yeah. making sure the aircraft's not rolling, making sure that we are testing it um, from you know a good vantage point where we can yeah. maximize the dynamic range of the measurements, take some screenshots, and actually do the measurements. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's doable, but it needs to be done carefully. It seems to me when I'm firing the machine guns, I don't need as much deflection as when I'm firing the Hispanos, which makes sense because, you know, especially when you get past the about convergence of about 250. Um, the, the machine. Anyway, that's beside the point. I don't think we can prove with this kind of testing that there is a problem with the damage model in the Anton for a start because it seems to take a lot of damage. The only instance that seemed weird was there didn't really seem to be a loss of airspeed when the, when the gear came down and when it was quite badly damaged. So it may just be that the drag from damage is not modeled very well. But apart from that, I mean, we knock the thing up pretty easily, um, you know, every time. So uh, it's a real it's a real hard one to answer this question, exactly what is going on. People are quite regularly um, observing what they think is, is strange behavior. But when you come to test this stuff, it's really hard to get any kind of consistent indication from DCS that there is a problem and if there is a problem, what it is. So really tough the other thing of course is that uh, the reports that come in on discord are often post-combat reports where you've got aircraft that are twisting and turning with all sorts of things going on uh, and so when you do a structured test where the aircraft are you know flying very gently and carefully in straight lines where you can guarantee that rounds are hitting then you see much more dramatic effects um, so that the um, twists and turns of a combat flight um, make it even less likely that you're getting the hits that you're thinking we're getting. Yeah. I'm yet to see a single TRK file as well in all of this debate. I've seen screenshots, yeah. I've seen some video, but I've, I've no one has posted a TRK file where it clearly shows this Anton was hammered and should not have been able to fly but was. So... 
Who knows? Um, the Anton the Anton damage model question for me is still very much open. I'm I'm not prepared to throw my hat in the ring with the players who are claiming that the Antons are unacceptably hardy um, just yet. There are a few anecdotes like that gear coming down that kind of leans in one way, but then you know there are plenty of times where you give them a burst and the airplane just falls apart. So I don't know. Still open for me, guys. I'm yet to be convinced. Right. Well, that's um, that's the first little bit of testing I wanted to do. Now, there's another little treat here, which Dietrich and I... Should we do the, the flak test, Dietrich? Yeah, we can do the flak test too. Definitely. Right. One of the debates that currently goes around is that the flak is too tough. Now, we did some testing before, and we came to the conclusion that that is um, not true. What I'm going to do here is I'm spawning in a Spitfire. Here I am in a Spitfire. And I'm just outside the heaviest flak on Storm of War, which is at Le Havre. So the very heaviest flak in terms of the caliber and concentration of guns is at Le Havre. And I'm going to fly directly over Le Havre, straight and level, at 18 to 20,000 feet. So that is the altitude that a lot of people are claiming the flak is impossibly difficult. Now there are two things we're going to do here. First of all, Dietrich is looking behind me. He can see behind me and I'm looking in front. I'm not going to look behind. I'm going to report the first flak burst I see. The half, by the way, is up underneath my nose. It's up up under there. You can just see it to the right of the nose. I'm going to report the first flak burst I see. And Dietrich is looking behind me. And why he's doing that will make itself clear shortly. So, straight and level. Now, I know that this is one of the heaviest flak um, locations on the server. If I was actually flying on the server for real now, I would already be weaving. Because... I don't want to get hit by flak. But I'm not doing that for this test. I'm just flying straight and level. A little bit of, you know, occasional maneuvering of the airplane just for balance and for course correction and whatnot. But probably small amounts of altitude changes occurring, 50 to 100, 200 feet here and there. I'm going relatively quick, 270 indicated. So that's probably 320, 340-ish true airspeed. Who knows, somewhere around there. Um, I will actually climb a little bit here. So 20,000, we're gaining some height. And I'm yet to see a flak burst. I haven't seen a single flak burst yet. And I'm getting pretty close to the coast now. To show you quickly on the map. There you go. I'm well within what I would expect to be flak range of the port. So I would expect the flak to be reaching up to me already um, if I was on the server. And I would be already have been taking evasive actions to avoid getting flak, flak bursted. But as you can see, I haven't seen a single burst yet. So flying along merrily now. I'm actually just going to bring the airplane's airspeed back a bit. Because it's quite heavy boost and can't run it like this forever. Right, still trundling along here. I've just noticed that my um, YouTube is saying that the the amount of information it's receiving is is dropping. So this stream might unfortunately fall over. Hopefully it doesn't. Okay, I'm pretty much over the port now. Quick check of the F10 map. Yeah, I'm right outside the mouth of the port, and I still haven't seen a single flak burst. There, first one there. There we go. There's the flak. It's now bracketing my airplane. So Dietrich, how long ago was the first flak burst that you saw? Okay, so the first flak burst that I saw was at uh, 53.24, so 53 minutes 24. Yeah, I've been hit, yep. And the, okay, and then the first that you reported was at 54.02, so that is 38 seconds later. Okay, so I was, I was actually flying straight and level through a flak barrage for 40 seconds for 40 before seconds, I got hit. Yeah before I got hit. And the reason I 
uh, didn't see it is because it was all landing behind me behind and below me. All below, yeah, below, you know, just under the nose or something like that, or you know, just below the wings or that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the the first flak burst that was in front of you and slightly high of you, which was the first one that you reported seeing, was yeah. 38 seconds later, and then you reported damage 18 seconds after that. Right. And so that 18 seconds later means basically one minute. You'd been flying through flak for about a minute before you got hit. Right. So I'm flying straight and level through the heaviest flak on the server, and I didn't get hit oh i just saw a shell go past <laughs> i didn't get hit until about a minute of flying through it and 15 to 20 seconds of actually seeing it um yet the flak had been bracketing me for a good 40 seconds before i saw it and the reason we don't see the flak and we think it is suddenly hitting us with the first round is because it falls behind us and below us to begin with and it takes the guns 30 seconds or 40 seconds to get a fix on our aeroplane and fire at us. Now I'm actually probably beyond the flak belt. So I took one flak hit. No, it's still flying off around me. Oh, it's still flying off around me, okay. Yeah, it's oh, just I just can't, you, right? yeah, it's all behind me. And the other thing is that it's, uh, the ranges are vast. So you've got, um, I'm just thinking in terms of the width of the aircraft, it's probably uh, something in the order of 50 aircraft widths away from you, some of this stuff. It's both yeah. above you, so it's at your zenith. Uh, it's directly below you. You're at the nadir. Uh, it's behind you. Yeah, it's all over the place. I mean, the, the box of um, flat going off around you is Big. huge. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to just do this one more time um, and see if we get you know a vastly different result. So here we go, spawning in. So same location again, 20,000 feet or so, approaching La Havre. And this time what I think I'll do, Dietrich, is when you see the first flak burst, let me know. And we'll have a look at where it is. And then I'll start trying to fly a bit more evasively to avoid getting hit by the flak. So for those who are unfamiliar, who weren't listening or just joined, this is the heaviest flak on the entire server. It doesn't get any worse than this. This is uh, Le Havre. There are about six to eight 88 millimeter guns all located quite close together and they have a commando garret as well to assist them with the accuracy um, which is an optical device is that right Dietrich that is correct yes okay so it's a, as it's long as a, they can uh, see me they can combat. yep right so as long as they can see me then they can hit me let's just quickly check the map just so we can see how far out we are I'll just draw a line if it will let me okay 21 kilometers now each of these large squares is about 10k. So I would expect the flak to be able to reach me 5 to 10 kilometers out from the port. So about half the distance again from what we are. And this is kind of the way the flak is designed on Storm of War, is to deter people from basically loitering and flying around over these major cities. Caen, Saint-Lô, Rouen, Argentan, uh, Le Havre, Cherbourg, depending on obviously whose whose hands those cities are in. It also means it's quite easy to get out of the flak simply by going around these populated areas. Okay, have we got any landing near us yet? Nothing yet. Okay, nothing yet. Let's just check where we are. We are 13 kilometers out. Like I said, I would already be flying defensively, uh, not defensively, but I'd, I'd already be weaving, adjusting my course slightly to avoid flak if I was on the server for real at this point. I might as well start looking behind as well, see if I can catch the first burst. Oh, B-17's inbound. <laughs> Still nothing? Nothing yet. I'm at 20,500 20, feet. I don't know if the altimeter is adjusted though for air pressure, but it's about there, about 20 ish. There's some. 
Okay, first burst. Right, I haven't seen him, and I still can't see them. But okay, so Dietrich says the first burst of flak of thing, firing. So the flak is now reaching up to me, and I'm just going to start. Oh, there's a burst off to my lower one o'clock. Uh, but you see, you tipped to look yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. You? So if you, there's a burst up ahead. Now I'm weaving a lot more. The flak is. I'm seeing it earlier as well because I'm adjusting my view and I'm seeing more of the sky. Now, something is that your weaving left and right is not taking you outside of the uh, the, the bracket. So that's true. That's true. But any, yeah, that's true. I'm still kind of in the box, aren't I? Because yeah. I'm not really going, I'm not changing my heading substantially. But if there is a single gun which is calculating my track and putting a round out in front of me, then that gun will miss. If they're just firing a general box pattern, then the chances of me getting hit remain the same. Oh, that's quite close now behind. So I'm just going to weave out in the opposite direction. I haven't heard a shell yet. So I'm seeing them, but I haven't heard one. And I'm directly over the port. Now, I got hammered last time flying straight and level. Um, a round came up and gave me a good walloping. But this time, so far, so good. I can hear them now. I can just hear a couple of flak bursts. Yeah. I don't know where they're landing, though. Can you see them? Yeah, I can see them. They're a long way away. There's okay. probably something in the order of 10 to 20 wingspans away. Okay. So basically, at this point, I'm kind of feeling a lot safer. I'm, I'm not out of it yet, but, you know, for the most part, that was... Survival. Oh, that was close. <laughs> that was quite close. That was about 10 meters behind, maybe, and then three or four meters above. It actually looked a lot more than that. Okay. It looked further away. All right. It looked further away from my perspective. Okay. Oh, that's all right then. Didn't do any damage. I just heard it as well. It wasn't. There's the burst well off to the left. Okay. I'm actually starting to get complacent as well with my um, maneuvering, so. It's no surprise that it's starting to reach up and find me again. So there we go. And this is all the guns focused on a single aircraft. Uh, normally you would not go anywhere near a port with less than a squadron or three. Yeah, I mean, in real life, there's no way a single aircraft would fly over a port like this. Um, in fact, they, pr they hardly touched La Havre because it was such a flak nest. They basically just avoided it. There was huge amounts of flak at La Havre, um, even through till end of August. 44. I think it didn't get didn't get taken till like September or October or something. Le Havre was around for ages in German hands. So there we go. My my feeling remains that the flak on Storm of War is perfectly acceptable. And if you want to avoid getting hit by the heavy stuff, you just have to fly accordingly. Um, straight and level will get you killed. But maneuvering, knowing you know where the flak centers are. For example, Le Havre, Caen, Saint Lo. These places are heavy, but you can not get hit by it. If you just if you just fly properly so no changes will be made people don't realize as well where the flak's landing i think a lot of people think they're getting hit by the first shell but if you look back the flak has probably been firing at you for ages you just haven't seen it as we've demonstrated a couple of times right i'm going to call this live stream to a close um conclusions are that i can't decide about the anton i'm not convinced there's enough um, data for us to really say that the Anton is more hardy than it should be, although that one little instance where the gear came down and it seemed to keep going fast suggests that ED might want to look at the aerodynamic effects of damage on that aircraft. I can't conclude anything about the Hispanos and the machine guns, whether, and like um, someone said, um, it's possible the SL mod has something to do with this, so we need to redo these tests with SL mod running on the test server. And the flak question for me, no changes need to be made to the flak because it is perfectly acceptable how it is. And yeah, sure, there's always the risk that a random shell will hit you, but you can minimize your risk of being hit with tactical flying. And I'll leave it at that. Okay, guys, I'm calling this uh, live stream to a close. 45 minutes is plenty long enough. Thanks, Dietrich. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.